Okay, folks, we took the car for a ride and everything's fine. I checked the transmission fluid level when I came back and it was good. Now what I did when I finished filling it, I actually did put a little bit, uh, maybe another eight or 10 ounces from the fourth uh, quart in since it called for 3.3, but I figured there's still some still that didn't come out. So I didn't want to overfill it. But on the other hand, I didn't want to have to crawl down in there at that nut again or that you know, that fill plug to start all over and add more. So I guessed right. Um, when I finished putting the drain plug in, of course, I filled it up uh, with the funnel, put the fill plug back in. Both are tight. They don't leak. And then I turned the car on, slowly went through all of the gears in the automatic transmission, all the way down to one, and then all the way back up again to park, just to make sure that it was engaging and it gave the transmission fluid a chance to work its way through everything in there. And then uh, I took it for a ride of about a mile and a half or so uh, just to warm it up. It, the transmission shifted properly as it's supposed to. And then when I came back in here, I checked the fluid level and it was fine. So that part of the job is done. Now, of course, anytime I have the hood open, I also want to check other things, um, you know, other maintenance things. That's always a good thing to do. Uh, I've got the uh, the radiator is full, of course. Um, I'm going to put some more washer fluid in this time of year. You go through quite a bit of it. Um, as you can see here, uh, fluid, the other fluid levels. Let me give my flashlight so you can see better. This is the uh, this white thing here. That's the power steering fluid. You can see that that's fine. And over here is the master cylinder for the brake fluid. Uh, right in there and that level is fine as well. The other thing I want to check is to make sure my battery terminals are not corroded. Uh, if they are you just got to brush them off or put a little oil on the terminals. Um, and then if possible you want to take a quick look at your serpentine belt over here. That's your main drive belt for most of the functions of your engine. So you want to make sure it's not too worn, it's not cracked. They usually last about 100,000 miles or so. This may be the original one on here, I'm not sure. But it's one of those things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because it is a fairly extensive repair. They've got to take a lot of this stuff off to get at it and reroute it. So that's a job pretty much for a shop to do rather than a, a homeowner. But I just want to make sure it's still snug uh, and it doesn't look cracked. Because if this breaks on you, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> So at any rate, those are the regular maintenance things I always check when I'm looking. Um, um, and so, Oh, and of course the oil. I check the oil too. That's, there's the oil fill right there, of course, or the oil dipstick, of course. Um, and that's fine, so I don't need to do anything with that. Um, I'm going to do for an oil change in here maybe next month. Uh, since I went to a synthetic motor oil, I only have to change it maybe twice a year instead of four times a year. Um, the recommended interval, I think, is 3,500 miles or so, 3,000 to 3,500 miles. But with the synthetic oil, you can actually go probably eight, um, depending on your vehicle and the quality of oil and filter you use, maybe even 10. So I'll, I'll now change the oil in this twice a year. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do today, um, since it's time to do it anyhow, is I'm going to do a tire rotation. I'm going to move the front tires to the back and the backs to the front. Uh, this manages your tire wear better. That way you're not grinding down the front tires as quickly, especially with a front wheel drive car. Those, the front tires are going to wear a whole lot faster than the rear uh, tires. So, and I typically would do that every other oil change when I had the conventional motor oil. So twice a year, uh, and I'm due to do that on this one, even though I'm not doing the oil change. Um, basically, I'm going to use my uh, floor jack here, and then I have a smaller floor jack from the rear. I'll just lift up this this side, and then the other side. We'll do two wheels at a time, of course. Uh, have an impact wrench and uh, with the air compressor, so it won't be difficult to do. The other thing that I will do in connection with that is I'll examine my brakes and rotors. Uh, are the rotor surfaces smooth? Are they scored? Um, do the brake pads have plenty of life left on them? 
I'm getting a bit of a squeak right now to my left rear and I've got to figure out why that's the case. I'm not sure why, but um, I'll take a look at that. Maybe one of the calipers is sticking, but at any rate, I'll check my brakes while I have the wheels off and then I'll be good for another six months of tire wear uh, with what we are. And again, this is a homeowner thing. Yes, it's not as um, simple as just going to the shop and doing it and they don't charge a whole lot for a rotation, but the thing that I like is that way I can examine the brakes and the rotors. Um, sometimes if you have a good mechanic, he'll do that for you, but if you just take it to a, a regular tire shop, the guys who work there might not know anything about brakes and rotors, so you can't always trust what they have to say if they even bother to check, because that's not what they're being paid to do. So that way I can do it myself. If you do take it to a shop to get the tires rotated, please make sure you ask the mechanic to check the brakes and rotors, make sure everything is good, and find out how much brake life you've got left on it. Uh, they'll typically do that with inspections depending on which state you're in anyhow. 